Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the course. If you haven't enjoyed the previous topics which were a bit technical, you will definitely enjoy this one. Everything that we have learned so far, we're just leading up to this section. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to color correct and color grade a video from the beginning to the end without using any loot, just using Lumetri Color Panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I have a music video here that we're gonna color grade. It was shot on the Lumix GH5 in 10-bit and I used Vlog Elo Picture Style. It is a very flat picture style. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is color correct the video, adjusting the tone, exposure and fix white balance issues. Secondly, we're gonna fix the skin and other colors to make sure they look natural. And finally, we're gonna color grade the video to give it a creative look. We are going to do all this in Adobe Premiere Pro 2022 without using any plugins. So you shall see how easy it is to use the Lumetri Scope as well as the Lumetri Color Panel on a real project and generally how easy color grading is. Now let's start with exposure and tone correction. So here we are inside Adobe Premiere Pro. You can see our video is already edited. All we need to do is to color correct and color grade the video. The first thing I'll do is to change the workspace to the one we created earlier. After that, I'll go through all the clips in the timeline and look for a good frame that I can use as a reference. So let me scrub through the clips and I'm going to go with this frame right here. The first step is to correct the tone and the exposure of the video. Let me bring the waveform so that we can see it better. As you can see, it's very flat. Looking at the waveform, you can see the graph is in the middle because the image is flat. For us to have a good exposure, this graph needs to be within 0 and 100 IRE with blacks barely touching 0 IRE and with whites barely touching 100 IRE. So let me come to the basic correction and the first thing I normally do is to adjust the contrast. I'm going to put the contrast all the way to 100 look at what happens to the waveform graph then i will come to the blacks and adjust it so that it touches just above zero somewhere around here then the whites make sure they barely touch 100 ire always look at the waveform when you are adjusting you can see over here the whites are clipping because of these bright lights on this part of the image that's fine next is the shadows the image looks a bit washed out so let me adjust the shadows to remove that washed look somewhere around here. Then the highlights. Because of the bright lights in the image, I will reduce the highlights a bit to take away some of the brightness and here it looks fine. You can see on the graph, after adjusting the shadows and the highlights, the image has become a bit dark. I can tell by the waveform. It is not hitting 100. So I will adjust the exposure now to right about here. So far so good, but I can still see a bit of haze and contrast isn't that much. So I'll go to the curves, RGB curves, and grab the Luma curve right from the first horizontal line and lower the shadows a bit. This will take away some of that haze. Then I'll grab the highlights and increase them a bit so that we can create this S curve which will create contrast in the image. This looks good for now. See the before clip? and after. When I'm correcting the brightness of the image, my focus is to get the skin tone right. Skin tone is not the color of the skin. It is the brightness or luminous level of the skin. And on the waveform, it should fall between 40 and 60 IRE. Looking at the waveform, everything looks okay. But for me to see, if the skin tone is okay as well, I will need to show only the skin tone on the waveform, which you can do by coming to the effect controls, opacity, select the Bezier 2 and create a mask around the skin tone. You can see on the waveform, we now only have the graph showing the skin tone and it's between 40 and 60 IRE, which is what we want. So I'll come to the effect controls window and delete that mask 
to have the full image again. Then let's go to the next item which is fixing white balance and correcting colors. When it comes to white balance corrections, the first thing I do is to change the scopes from the waveform to RGB parade. When I look at the RGB parade, I can see that the colors aren't quite balanced. The reds and the greens are okay because they look the same, but the blues are too high. The goal is to make all these graphs look the same. And one way to do that is by using the temperature and tint sliders in the white balance section. And the good place to start when fixing white balance issues is to use the white balance selector. Select this eyedropper and click on anything that is supposed to be white in your image. In this image, I know that this frame was white, so I will click on that and it will automatically adjust white balance. But if the graphs are still looking different, you can manually adjust the sliders here. The temperature may be here, the tint may be here. If the temperature and the tint sliders can't get the graphs to match, then let's go to the curves, RGB curves, and let me start with the blue curve. Looking at the graphs, the highlights needs to come down. So I will grab the end point and bring it down. Then grab the dark points and bring them a bit down as well. Just barely hitting the zero. Then go to the red channel, bring the highlights up a bit. And the greens up a bit. You can see now the graphs look the same. The colors in the image are all balanced. The tone and white balance is done and I will go to the effect controls, right click on that lumetric color and rename it maybe tone correction. Then I will copy this lumetric color and paste it to other clips to give me a rough start and then go through each individual clip and adjust to match them to each other. The next thing I'll do is to make sure I have the correct colors in the image. Sometimes when you are doing white balance to the whole image, some colors may shift, like the skin colors or specific colors in the image. So I need to make sure that the skin tones have the correct colors and some of the other colors in the image as well that may have shifted. To do that, I will add another instance of Lumetric Color. You can see we now have two of them. That's why I renamed the first one. Next, we will go to the Lumetric Scopes and select the Vector Scope YUV. The first color I will adjust is the skin color. According to the Vector Scope, the skin color must lie on this line between red and yellow towards the orange. So what I'll do is, again, isolate the skin color by drawing a mask around the skin area. And looking at the vector scope, I can see that the skin color is towards the yellow side. To bring it to the line where it should be without affecting any other color in the image, a trick I normally do is by using the curves. So let's go to the curves. This time I will use hue saturation curves, then I will come to the hue versus hue. I am going to pick the eyedropper and select the skin color, then come to the hue versus hue curve and lift the middle node towards the orange while watching on the vector scope. And as I am lifting it up, you can see the skin color is also moving towards the orange until it lines up where the skin color should be. And when I am done. I'll go to the effects control window and remove the mask so that we can see the rest of the image. You can see the skin color is different now. Here is the before and here is the after. Now we have the correct skin color in the image. Another thing that I want to do is to boost the saturation of the blue pillars. This time I will use hue versus saturation curves. Pick the eyedropper and select the blue color and lift the nodes to increase the saturation. Maybe even this yellow as well. Select the eyedropper to pick the yellow and boost it too. After I'm done with adjusting the colors, I will rename this Lumetric color again to maybe color balance. 
then copy it to other clip as well and adjust them individually to match them. Now let's move on to color grading our video. After all the corrections are made, the video looks natural. Now we have to add a creative or a stylish look to our video or our image and at this stage it really goes with a personal taste or a reference that you may have. For me, I love to play around with color contrast. Every color has its opposite color. If the dominant subject in the frame is green, I will make the background pinkish so that it can stand out. I'm sure you get the idea. So every color in the color wheels, it has got its own opposite color. So I like to play around with color contrast. When I look at this clip, the dominant subject is our model and her skin color is orangish. So what I'll do is to make the background a bit bluish so that she can pop up. First, I'm going to add another instance of Lumetri color and go to the HSL secondary. Under the key, I will choose the eyedropper and select the skin color. Let me check the color forward slash gray so that it is the only one that I can see. I will use the HSL sliders to pull out a perfect key for her skin color. You can use this add key eyedropper to select where you think it is the skin color and it will adjust the sliders for you. You can add as many times as you can until you have a perfect key of the skin. Once I have a perfect key, I will select this invert box which looks like a picture icon and this means that I can change colors in the image without affecting the color which we have selected. In this case, her skin color. Then I will come down here to refine and push the denoise maybe to 10 and the blur maybe to 7. These refine tools help the colors to blend well with the isolated color. For this look, I want the background to look more bluish. So, I can start by adjusting the temperature slider under corrections to the bluish maybe around here. Then I'll go to the color wheels, change it from a single wheel to the three wheels, shadows, mid-tones and highlights. First thing, I'll make sure that the shadows are a bit darker by pushing the slider down. Then I will move the colors on the color wheel towards the bluish direction. Then with the highlights, I will lower the brightness a bit and push the colors towards the orange direction just to make a contrast with too much blue and maybe add a bit of saturation to it somewhere around here then go and uncheck the color forward slash gray button wow you can see it is already looking good this yellow color doesn't look good i want it to look a little bit orangish so i will go to the curves hue versus hue select that yellow color and make it a bit orange finally i will go to the creative side and add a bit of faded film maybe to seven to take away some of that too much contrast sharpness maybe to 30 and vibrance maybe to 15 and reduce the saturation a bit and for now the grading is pretty much done you can see the before and after Let me rename this new Lumetri color to color grade. Then copy and paste it to all the other clips and go through each clip again and make some micro adjustments here and there. Now let me take you through what we have done. The video was very flat. The first step we did was to color correct it by adjusting the tone and exposure. Then we did a color balance to bring back some of the colors that might have shifted and lastly we color graded it to give it this specific look and we did all of this by just using Lumetri color panel alone in Adobe Premiere Pro 2022. Like I said before at the beginning, this video was shot in a log profile, very flat picture style and not every camera can shoot in a flat picture style. Now let's look at how to color grade a video that was shot using a standard picture profile which is found on every camera and that we shall do in the next video. This is it. Peace.